This is the Ford Focus 1 litre EcoBoost ST line, complete with a fair payload of onboard technology. There's a touch screen, sat nav, Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, and Android Auto. It's all very neatly integrated and works very well. Brand new cars with this level of tech can come with hefty price tags. But if you don't have the cash to splash, there are ways to tech up your existing motor without breaking the bank. That's why today I'll be driving this, a 15-year-old Suzuki Jimny. In this Jimny, the tech is virtually non-existent, aside from an FM radio with CD player, a digital clock and a lockable glove box. So today I'm going to smarten it up a bit with a variety of aftermarket add-ons and spend the day running some errands to find out if they can improve my driving experience. But before I set off, I need to check my tyres. Since 2014, all new cars have had to have built-in tyre pressure monitoring systems. This Jimny is much older than 2014 and doesn't have one, but this smart tyre monitoring system can do it for you. You simply pop a sensor onto each of your tyre valves, plug the receiver into your car's 12-volt socket and connect it all to a dedicated app. This though is a bit low, I'd like to put some air in that. The system detects slow leaks, monitors your tyres' temperatures and can track individual tyre pressures too. Apparently one in five of us never bothers to check their tyre pressures. That means one of you lot are guilty. Ben. Next up, a tracker. Most modern cars have built-in GPS tracking and many allow you to monitor vehicle location and journey history in an app. To give the redoubtable Jimny similar technology, I'm fitting this car lock into its onboard diagnostics port. As well as security alerts, it sends instant notifications to your smartphone when it detects harsh acceleration, hard braking and sharp cornering. Perfect for parents wanting to keep an eye on their teenage drivers. Fully pumped up, I'm finally on my way and I'm turning my attention to the next thing in need of a tech makeover, the radio. I'm updating it using the Pure Highway 200. Power comes from the 12-volt socket and it transmits the dozens of DAB radio stations through a spare frequency on the existing FM radio or plays them by wire through the radio's 3.5mm aux input. It's quite easy to use. You can easily switch between the whole range of stations. The uh, signal strength is good and I think it's uh, making the best of what's available. It's not very neat though. There's that wire going into the head unit, the three and a half millimetre wire. There's the power wire going into the 12 volt socket. You also have to have a dedicated dab aerial which clutters up the windscreen. So quite a lot of in-car clutter. So next I'm trying out a gadget that creates slightly less in-car clutter and can do more than play radio. This is the Amazon Echo Auto. It's a relatively new way of getting Alexa into your car. It fits onto your dashboard with an air vent clip and looks fairly neat. It gives you all of the hands-free functionality of Alexa and has eight microphones with far-field technology to help recognise voices in noisy environments. I'm going to call my daughter and see how well it works. Alexa, call Julia. Calling Julia's mobile. Hello? Hi, Julia. Happy birthday. Thank you. Are you hearing me clearly? I'm going to be honest, I'm not hearing you super clearly. It sounds very windy. I can also hear my own voice back. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Have you remembered to pick up the dry cleaning? Uh, not yet. That'll be next on my on my list of things to do. I better get on with it. Bye. The Echo can also shout navigation instructions at you via your smartphone. I'm using Google Maps. Alexa, navigate me to Fountain Cleaners. Getting directions. If you don't see them, tap the notification on your iPhone when it's safe to do so. What a faff! It's illegal to use my phone while driving. So I've got to safely pull over and tap the notification to get the directions going. Hopefully, some directions will start. Continue straight. At last, a direction. Like at home, you can use Alexa to make calls, send messages, add to your shopping list and access music, audiobooks, podcasts and thousands of internet radio stations. And there's my favourite pastime, playing games. Alexa, let's play 20 questions. Let's play 20 questions. Is it an animal, vegetable, or mineral? Animal. Is it small? Yes. Finally, Alexa and I reach the dry cleaners. 
possible destination is on the right. No, it's on the left. After picking up the laundry, yes, great. I want to try out another piece of in-car voice control tech to see if it's any better than glitchy Alexa. Android Auto. The app has similar functionality to the Echo Auto, but Google's in charge here. OK, Google. Navigate me to the farm, Stratford-on-Avon. It offers a simplified touch interface and, unlike Apple's CarPlay, you can use the phone on its own and don't need a compatible head unit. It's time to get back on the road and pick up Mrs Bentley's supper. Advantages of Android Auto over the Echo are that you can see maps and directions while navigating and you don't have to stop to get started. Hey, Google! Play message. You have one message. Hi. Thanks for getting dry cleaning. At Farm Shop, can you buy a goat? Do you want to reply? With cheese or without? Voice control's very useful in the car. Thankfully, um, Android Auto works very well and it's free. And it's successfully got me to where I need to be. I do love a farm shop. They always have a fabulous selection of chutneys. With dinner purchased, it's time to head home. Oh, blast! But Ben the sound man has blocked me in while he's checking out the artisanal bangers. What's your favourite sausage? The Lord's Wood Lobster. Yeah, I love one of them. Can I have two of them? Luckily for me, I've retrofitted this reversing camera from Autovox. The camera's wired to your car's reversing lights, while the screen sits on your dashboard and can be powered, yet again, from the 12-volt socket. Let's make sure I don't hit Ben's car. Ooh. The camera transmits pictures wirelessly to the screen whenever you engage reverse gear. It's got these guidelines, but they don't move when you're... Ooh. Ooh, that's not bad at all. Oh, perfect. It was quite helpful, actually. The screen's a bit dim, but averted a disaster. My car's full of wires, my 12-volt sockets feeling the strain, and my dashboard's littered with tech, but at least my errands are complete. 